how do you play walking bass through a jazz blues? What's the best approach to take? The jazz blues is a variation of the standard 12 bar blues and because of this relationship between the two, you might think that the best thing to do is to just take all the scales you play in a standard 12 bar blues and play them over the chord of a jazz blues. But it's not quite as simple as that. Yes, you can play Mixolydian over the 1, 4 and 5 chords, just like we talked about earlier in this series. But that knowledge alone isn't enough because a jazz blues gives us three new and unique problems that we've got to get to grips with. Problem number one, how should you play through this 6, 2, 5, 1 progression? Problem number two, how can you avoid clashing tonalities with the other members of the band? If you want to play half whole diminished over a dominant chord, but the piano player wants to play mixolydian, what happens then? And problem number three, what should you play through really quick chord changes, like this 2-5 here, or like the turnaround at the end of the form? Well, let's go one issue at a time, and we're gonna start with quick chord changes. So the problem here is that each chord of this 2-5-1 that goes into E flat only lasts two beats. Now our job as a walking bass player is to outline these harmonies. We get two notes on each chord and we can't even outline a simple triad in that time, let alone the complex sound of a mode. So what should we actually play over a chord change like this? Well, the answer lies in two walking bass fundamentals. Fundamental number one is using the root note of the chord on the downbeat of the chord. So in this example, that means here on beats one and three. This creates a really strong harmonic foundation or starting point, if you like, for the chord and it allows the other instruments like the guitar or like the piano to fill in the rest of the chord on top of what the bass is playing. Fundamental number two is to play an approach note on beats two and four, which then leads into the root note of the next chord we're about to play. The approach notes can either be chromatic approach notes or they can be scale approach notes and this technique of playing a root note then an approach into the next root note doesn't just work well for this 2-5 progression here, it also works really well for the turnaround at the end of the form. So we've solved one problem so far and we've got two left. So now let's move on to looking at conflicting tonalities. As bass players, if we wanted to play mixolydian over one of these dominant chords, it means we could imply a natural nine, a natural 11th, and a natural 13th. But if the piano player decides he wants to play whole half diminished over the same dominant chord, then they'd be implying a flat nine, a sharp nine, and a sharp 11. And having all these extensions together would just sound like a complete mess. So how can we avoid this? Well, there's two parts to the answer. One is harmonic and the other is rhythmic. Let's look at harmony first. Often when jazz piano players or jazz guitarists play chords, they're not playing every single note of the chord. They're often missing out the root and the fifth. So they'll play the third, but then most of their notes within a chord exist from the seventh and upwards. So if they're mostly playing between the seventh and the 13th, and we want to avoid notes that clash with them, it would make sense for us to play mostly within the range of the root to the seventh of each chord. So harmonically speaking, we're making sure we keep out of one another's way. In that last example though, I was still playing plenty of notes which weren't chord tones. So what's going on there? Well, this is where the rhythmic part of our answer comes in. So in that last example, I was purposefully utilizing something known as the strong beat, weak beat principle within my playing. If you've not heard of this before, this principle states that in a bar of 4-4, beat one is our strongest beat, beat three is our next strongest beat, not quite as strong as beat one, and then beats two and four are equally weak. So by placing chord tones on our strongest beats, beats one and three, we emphasize the harmonic sound of each chord with much more strength and much more clarity. And because beats two and four carry a lot less harmonic importance, we can play scale notes on them, we can play approach notes on them without them clashing too much with the rest of the harmony. So now that we understand the strong beat, weak beat principle, we can better understand how to play through that six, two, five, one progression at the end of the form. So the six chord, I'm still thinking about it in terms of a scale choice as a kind of half whole diminished. So I get that flat nine in there 
the two still thinking about it, Dorian 5 Mixolydian. So basically what I'm focusing on is trying to give the fundamental chord quality of each chord in my walking line and that means I can leave the range for extensions and color tones free for harmonic players like guitar players or piano players to specify or leaving that range open for a soloist to specify what the extensions would be. Now that we understand that, here's a demonstration of how all these concepts sound when they're combined into one walking line on a jazz blues. These methods can be a little bit tricky to grasp at first, but if you just persevere and put in the hard work, then you'll really see them raise the level of your walking playing up quite a lot. By no means are the techniques in this lesson a complete guide to walking bass, but a lot of the things we have looked over apply and work really well in jazz standards too. I've done a lesson on walking bass with jazz standards too, so if there's a card up here, that means the lesson is out and you can go and check it out. However, if you want to brush up on fundamentals of walking bass, click the card down here in the bottom right and you can go and check out the entire series. If you've enjoyed this lesson and you feel you've got something to say about it, then please do leave your comments and thumbs up down below and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in real soon. Take care.